Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for our 10th episode of Live from the Trevor Zoo. It's great to welcome you back to the zoo, and even though we can't see you in person, we will be doing these broadcasts on Facebook every Wednesday at 4 p.m., so we hope to see you there. And my name is Gabby Deo. I'm the husbandry keeper here at the Trevor Zoo. I studied veterinary technology before I started working here in the summer of 2019. And I basically help take care of the animals and do a variety of different tasks related to their day-to-day -day care. So today, we're going to be talking about bobcats and our current resident bobcat named Betty. Bobcats are a medium-sized North American cat that can be found from southern Canada to central Mexico, including most of the lower 48 United States. We have often seen bobcats in the wild around the Millbrook School campus. Here is a video which our director captured on one of his trail cams on the Millbrook property. A number of the bobcats that have been at the zoo over the years were local rescues from the wild, either injured or orphaned. Just a quick reminder, please feel free to ask questions throughout today's episode. You can just type them in the comments and we'll answer them towards the end of the episode. Over the years, there have been many different bobcats here at the Trevor Zoo. Two of the more infamous bobcats at the zoo arrived in April of 1985. Many zooies from the 80s and 90s will remember Coke and Kane, who were rescued by the Rhode Island Department of Conservation. Apparently, during a drug raid by the Rhode Island State Police Department, these two bobcats were confiscated from an alleged drug dealer who had them guarding his stash. Incredibly, they had been originally purchased from a pet store in Florida in 1978, so things were much different back then. The two bobcats lived at the zoo for many, many years and had a number of offspring. The female died from natural causes in 1997 at 19 years of age, and the male died in 2000 and was 22 years old. Coke and Kane had a total of nine offspring at the Trevor Zoo, all of which were sent to other zoos, except their last kitten, Sunshine, who stayed at the zoo and lived here for 20 years. She was born in 1990 and died in 2010. Betty is our current resident bobcat. She was born in the spring of 2010 and came to us in May of 2011. She had been rescued by Kindred Kingdom's Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Pennellville, New York. Betty had been imprinted on by humans, meaning that in her infancy, she spent too much time around people. This means she couldn't be released back into the wild. She wouldn't be able to fend for herself and could become a nuisance and even dangerous to people. At the time, we had another female bobcat that had been orphaned and was a suitable release candidate, so we transferred that bobcat to the good folks at Kindred Kingdom so they could prepare her for release. For the transfer, we met them on the road in upstate New York at a Betty Beaver's truck stop, which is how Betty got her name. And Betty is now 10 years old. She's been doing very well here, and she's pretty well known. She's uh, even been on the cover of one of our favorite magazines. So here are some facts about bobcats. They are the most abundant wildcat in North America. Originally evolved from the Eurasian lynx about 1.8 million years ago, they are closely related to the Canadian lynx. They're about twice the size of a domestic house cat and average about three feet long, weighing 20 to 30 pounds. However, the males are larger than the females. They are carnivores, meaning they eat meat. In the wild, they prefer to eat rabbits, but will also eat rodents, squirrels, chipmunks, and birds. They are fierce predators and can take down animals much larger than themselves, including young deer. Predators of the bobcat include cougars and wolves. The kittens can be preyed upon by coyotes and owls. Bobcats do rarely attack people. They're easily spooked by humans, so if one does attack, it may have rabies. The average bobcat lifespan is about 10 to 12 years in the wild. The oldest wild bobcat on record was 16 years old, and the oldest captive bobcat lived to be 32. We've had a few bobcats here at the zoo who lived into their 20s. Bobcats can leap as far as 12 feet and run at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, and they're pretty good swimmers. Bobcats are crepuscular, which means that they're most active during twilight or dawn and dusk. They have great night vision that lets them see in the dark. During the day, they sleep a lot in their dens. In the wild, they find small caves or hollow trees to make their dens. They're typically solitary and very territorial. Females never overlap in their ranges. They'll usually mark their areas with scents to scare off other bobcats. Bobcats do usually mate during late winter. 
After a gestation period of 62 days, they give birth to one to six kittens. The kittens nurse for about two months and will be on their own after about eight to 11 months. Bobcats are often confused with the lynx. They're similarly, similarly sized cats, but occupy different habitats. Lynx live in cold northern latitudes and are adapted to live in deep snow and long winters. Okay, so let's show you our bobcat exhibit and what we do to feed Betty and clean her habitat. So this is a video that we filmed yesterday morning. So I have Betty's food and water here right now. So we're gonna go to our bobcat exhibit and we will feed her so you guys can see what we do. And there's Betty, good morning Betty, she's ready. She knows what's coming. <laughs> so I'm just gonna set my stuff down gonna unlock her door. So you'll notice that she is a protected contact species. We do have some signs up that say that. And that just means that we do not go in the same space that she is in. So we have some special measures in place to allow us to do that. And she's pretty good about knowing what to do. So over here are our shift doors that allow us to shift her out so that we can go into her space while she's out on exhibit. So I just like to get eyes on her to make sure that she's out there. She is indeed out there. So these are the two doors I'm gonna use. That first one does the outside door. And then this next one does this one. It's just an extra measure just to make sure that she can't get in with us. And then I like to just make sure I got eyes on her again. She is indeed in her outside exhibit. It's just good to double check yourself. And then I'm going to just bring my stuff inside with me. Her food, her enrichment, her water. We have to bring a water bucket so we don't have a spigot right here. And then before I go in, I'm just going to grab my shoe brush and my cleaning solution just to make sure I don't track in any outside germs to her. And then I'll step in there and I'll just scrub this shoe. And we'll do the same thing when we leave just to make sure we're not bringing her germs back out with us into other spaces. I'm just going to hook that back up there. So we're allowed to go in here now. We can open this up. I'm gonna go ahead in. I'm bringing my food and her enrichment and water with me. And we can leave these open so she's out there. I'm just gonna set this down in here and grab my water brush. All right, so here's her water dish. So I'm just gonna give it a quick scrub. And then I try to dump it out over here so it's not right in her space. I'll just fill it up with a little bit of water, rinse it out, and then we'll fill it up with the rest of our water here. And so this is just our keeper area space that she goes back into. We feed her back here. She has um, a space to climb up, and she has a nest box up in there that she'll lay in sometimes. And she knows that her food is back here. So this is just a box that we're going to put her food in. So I have her food right here in this bowl. Today she's got a mixture of some chicks and some mice. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna close that up and I'm gonna put it upside down just to make it a little bit trickier for her. And we'll get to see what she does just to make it a little bit more entertaining than just putting her food in there for her since she doesn't have to hunt for it. And so that's pretty much it. Um, so we're gonna head out now. I'm gonna put my stuff outside here and then I'm gonna scrub my boots again since I went into her exhibit. Just give it a quick spray. And I'll scrub this boot. Give that a spray. So I'm not gonna step back in there now. But I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. Make sure that's latched good. And so now I'm gonna open her shift doors and we'll get to see her come out and go for her food. So I'm gonna open them both up. And then she usually knows that we're hanging out back here. So I usually have to close the door first before she'll come back out. Yep, there she comes and we'll get to see what she does with her enrichment. She knows that her food's under there, she can smell it. And so she's gonna go for it. <laughs> Sometimes it takes her a little bit of time to get to it, but she gets it eventually. She knows it's under there. I'm 
Looks like she may have found a piece. <laughs> All right, so while Betty's occupied with her diet, I was able to close her shift doors, so I'm gonna grab her uh, shovels that we used to poop scoop, and we're gonna head out onto her exhibit now so that we can do some poop scooping, because that's usually where she poops. She doesn't usually poop back here where she eats. So I'm gonna lock this, unlock this, and she's indeed locked in there and she's occupied. So that's good, we can use the enrichment to our advantage. So we're gonna go ahead into her exhibit. You'll get to see what it looks like up close. I do need the compost bucket. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is her exhibit. She has some stuff she can climb on. She has another box that she'll sometimes take a little cat nap during the day on. And I'm just gonna look over here. Sometimes she will go to the bathroom over here, but lately I think she's been choosing this spot over here. She usually keeps it to the same area. And her poop is pretty easy to see, so we're gonna go ahead and just start scooping that up. So we'll do that. And it looks like she's got a couple of old bones here as well. She does like to chew on those. We give her those as well. We give her a wide variety of different meat items. So she got the chicks and mice this morning, but sometimes she'll get liver or uh, steak or fish um, or these bones. Pretty much any type of meat that, um, that we'll give her. She pretty interested in it all. She does not too picky. So I'm just gonna keep going and keep scooping all of this. Looks like she was a busy girl. So that's pretty much it. So the servicing of her exhibit is complete. She has fresh water, she has food, enrichment, and we cleaned up her poop. So she's all set and so we can head on out now. Oh, I think I found one more bone. We'll just get that old bone out of here. Sounds like she's still working on that box. I guess she's still got a few things. Okay. So I'm just gonna make sure I lock this back up now. I make sure that's locked nice and tight. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna open her shifters. That's where she can go back out onto her exhibit now. And there she goes. So as you can see, taking care of Betty is pretty straightforward. But we always wanna make sure we know how to work our shift doors and double check everything. Obviously, we never want any of our animals to get out of their exhibits, uh, but with a protected contact or non-contact species like Betty or Bobcat, we never wanna be in the same space as her. Um, so in the summers, we have keeper talks and one of our more popular ones is our Bobcat talk. So in the late afternoons, we will feed her her dinner. So let's take a look. So now I'm gonna show you our Bobcat Keeper Talk that we do in the summer. And so I have her diet with me right now. It's just a little bit of beef, like steak basically. And I'm gonna put it on the pole. But so this is Betty, our Bobcat, and she is about 10 years old. And, and there she goes. She, this is what she does, so she's pretty skilled. I'm gonna wait till she comes down and, and sits for me before I give her her food. Um, so a little bit about Bobcats, they are native to anywhere from southern Canada to Mexico basically, anywhere where there are trees. And <laughs> there she goes, I'll wait again till she sits. So they're meat eaters, carnivores obviously. So they eat lots of different um, animals in the wild, rabbits mostly, uh, rodents, small birds, sometimes even small deer, and unfortunately even sometimes domesticated animals, which causes a problem with people. Um, and here she gets um, a wide variety of meat, like I'm giving her now. This is, um, like I said, beef. We'll also give her chicks and mice, um, which she obviously doesn't have to hunt for, but uh, we still do try to encourage her natural behavior by offering it in different ways, whether it's hanging or um, in a box, so she has to dig for it or anything like that. Um, so we, we try to use different types of enrichment to encourage that behavior that way. Um, but uh, as far as in the wild, they are pretty good hunters. They're, um, they more rely on their, their sense of sight and hearing versus their sense of smell, which isn't that well developed. But uh, they use, whoops, I'm sorry, Betty. 
Well, we'll just leave that piece. I'll get it for you later, Betty. <laughs> I know, you're being so good. Here, she'll come all the way this way. We'll see if we can get her to come that way. All right, and then come down, Betty. Good girl. She's a pretty good climber, as you can see. Those sharp claws is why we're not going in there with her. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see if I can grab that piece that I dropped. I know, Betty. I got it. There we go. We got a little bit of leaves on there, but we'll get it for you, Betty. I don't want you to miss it. I don't think she'll care if there's a little bit of leaves on there. Good girl. Um, so yeah, so she obviously she doesn't have to hunt here, um, but they're pretty good hunters in the wild. They even hunt at night sometimes. Um, and uh, they used to be a lot more common in North America, but unfortunately, due to habitat destruction, increasing human population, they also have been hunted for their fur. Um, it's kind of declined their population a little bit, um, but, uh, but they're still seen. Um, and as I said, as for hunting in the wild, you can see she's kind of got spotted um, fur. <laughs> yeah, she's making some noise. She's got spotted fur, so that helps in the wild to uh, camouflage them when they hunt. And um, she's, she's good at climbing. <laughs> And as you can see, this is why we don't go in there with her. She is a hunter, so she's got those sharp teeth, those sharp claws, so we don't want to go in there with her. Um, but uh, she's uh, pretty good. She'll still exhibit some natural like stalking behaviors, um, but like I said, she doesn't have to hunt, so she relies on us for her food. But um, I think that's pretty much it. So that's basically our keeper talk for her. And uh, yeah, that's all, that's all I got. <laughs> So as I said before, the bobcat and lynx are pretty similar, but there are some significant differences. So let's take a look at this graphic we found online to see the differences. So if you look at the pictures, you'll notice one of the main differences is that the lynx, their hips are a bit higher than their shoulders. Their paws are also a little bit larger. They have longer legs and the tufts on their ears are also a bit longer. So those are some of the main differences that you can kind of see. So we have some great websites to find some more information on bobcats. So let's take a look at those. The first one here is from the National Zoo, which is run by the Smithsonian. So they've got some great information, uh, some fun facts and stuff about conservation that you guys can take a look at. The next one is National Geographic for Kids. So that also has some good information, some great pictures that they have up there for you to take a look at. And the other one is National Geographic. Uh, their website has some great photos as well and some more information you can take a look at, some videos as well. And then the last one is Sciencing, which again has some more fun facts and good stuff for kids to take a look at. So we also found a few videos online that we wanna share with you today. The first video we have is of a bobcat leaping, which was filmed just last month. It was captured on April 15th in Pecan Island, Louisiana. And you can see some pretty impressive jumping here. So that's uh, pretty cool to see. Uh, we have another video for you uh, that shows a bobcat catching a salmon in the Ho Rainforest in the Olympic National Park in Washington State. An Olympic National Park ranger named Lee Snook filmed this in 2016. So as you can see, bobcats are not afraid of water. As I said before, they're pretty good swimmers and pretty good hunters as well. Looks like our bobcat there just caught their fish and is pretty happy with their prize. If you want to check out these videos further, we'll put um, a description in, um, in the show's description of uh, links for you to take a look at. So now let's take a look at some questions that we might have and we'll try to give you guys some answers. And you can ask about bobcats or the zoo in general. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. So it looks like we've got a question from Augie. Hello again, Augie, it's nice to see you. Age four, would like to know, why is her tail so short? Our cat Denver has a very long tail. So that's a great observation. So from their name, Bobcat, they um, shows you they've got a bobbed tail. And so they get this name because of their tail. And the reason why is typically because they'll hunt rodents and rabbits or hares on the ground. And so they haven't adapted a long tail because if they have a long twitching tail, it kind of helps to alert prey or even other predators. So it's uh, basically an evolutionary tactic that they've evolved to have. All right, so let's see, any other questions that we have? We have a question from Shalay Lynn Hurley. Hello, can people come and visit the zoo? 
So unfortunately, right now at the current moment, because of the coronavirus pandemic, we are not open to the public, but we do hope to be open soon and hope that we can have some visitors come and we'll be very excited to, to welcome you guys back when we are open. And we'll definitely communicate that with you guys when we're open so that you guys can come check out all of our animals. All right, any other questions? No, okay. Um, all right, so if that's it for questions, uh, that's basically all that we have for our episode today. If you've enjoyed today's episode, you can view all of our previous episodes on our YouTube channel. And you can also take a look at our streaming cameras of our lemur exhibit and our red panda exhibit, as well as our pond, which is on 24 hours a day. And you just have to go to www.millbrook.org forward slash Trevor Zoo Live. And basically, I just want to thank you all guys for joining us for part of your Wednesday here today. And we really appreciate all the interest in the Trevor Zoo from all of our friends and fans across New York, across the United States, and even around the world. And we hope that you guys continue to join us here every Wednesday at 4 p.m. for our live broadcasts. And we really hope that we'll be able to see you guys soon. And we just want to say thank you again. Thanks for watching. Be well and see you soon. What? <laughs>